Hello and welcome to today's webinar presented by Dr. Felix Epler of Milteni Biotech. Today's webinar will cover an introduction to microvalve mediated cell sorting and its benefits with some application examples and the transfer of those examples and applications into clinical settings. Today's presenter, Dr. Felix Epler, joined Milteni Biotech in 2018 after studying biology at the University of Bonn in Germany with a focus on immunology, cell biology, and molecular biology. His PhD in molecular biomedicine was also obtained at the University of Bonn at the Life and Medical Science Institute, Laboratory of Molecular Immunology and Cell Biology. There, he concentrated on integrin-mediated migration, adhesion, and activation of leukocytes. Today, Dr. Epler is the global junior product manager for the MaxQuant Tito cell sorter at Milteni Biotech. A link to today's recording will be provided to all participants. You can find additional resources on fluorofinder.com, including a unique antibody search platform and comprehensive flow cytometry panel design tool. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat feature and we will address them at the end of the webinar as time permits. And with that, I'll hand the controls over to Dr. Felix Epler. Felix, can you hear me today? Yes, thank you, Jeff. And thank Excellent. you for that kind introduction. You're very welcome. I'm really happy. Sorry. You're very welcome. Go ahead. Thanks. I'm really happy to be here today and to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Max Quantito cell sorter we developed here at Milton Biotech and about the benefits of this plug and play cell sorting using a fully closed cartridge system. And um, yeah, in the beginning of my talk, I would really love to dive a little bit into the history of cell sorting. And I think one, uh, yeah, one guy should be named here, and that is Mark Fulweiler. He's seen by a lot of people as the inventor for cell sorting as we know it these days. And um, yeah, Mark did not only invent uh, the cell sorter as we know it mainly today, but he did that by combining two already existing technologies, which on the one hand is the cool to counter and on the other hand was an inkjet oscillograph. And with that, he came up with the droplet cell sorter. As I said, that is the device which is mainly found in the field. Here you can see a picture as well of Mac uh, from 1991 with one of the first droplet sorters ever built. So um, I would like to point out that this was not the first idea of Mac to uh, develop this droplet cell sorter system. But uh, when he thought about sorting cells and isolating from each other, um, he came up with another idea. And um, there I would like uh, to cite him, him in his own words. And uh, he said, at that stage, I set out to look for ways to physically isolate cells based on some electrically generated signal. And I started out looking at valves, mechanical valves, that could be electrically switched and move a flowing stream of liquid from one channel to another channel and back. But when you look at that, it's a very slow process and you could not process cells very rapidly. So you see, the first idea of Mac was also to use microvalves to sort cells. But back in these days, technology was not advanced as today and this was simply not possible. But in these days, with our advanced technologies we have, we are actually able to do that. And that's how like the, the Max Quantito cell sorter really works via a microvalve, which is sorting the cells. And I will explain that in a few minutes. So of course, uh, the idea to push a cell sorter device, which uses a microvalve and thereby a very, very different technology to the common technologies found in the field um, came also with a reason. Of course, the droplet sorters uh, found in the field today are very nice uh, instruments. Uh, you can nicely sort cells, but they also come with some backdrops, you know. And uh, I would like to explain using this slide here which uh, of these backdrops we think we can overcome by using the Max Quant title. So, first of all, uh, it's uh, the high pressure with this, which is present in, um, yeah, in common droplet sorters and which can go up to 70 PSI during the sorting process. So uh, when the cells are hydrodynamically focused in this area here, we have this very high pressure 
also high shear stress. And this is, of course, um, yeah, stressful for the cells. Then, when the cells leave the nozzle in the droplets, there's a rapid decompression as these cells come back to a normal pressure found in our surroundings, right? And directly afterwards, there's charge applied to the droplets in order to redirect them here in that electrical field uh, in either the negative or the positive samples. And of course, all these things are stressful for the cells. In addition, we have an open environment where the droplets are sorted. And this is, of course, also a problem in terms of yeah, contaminations or also safety for the operators. And of course, the cells in droplet sorters, they run through a tubing in the system and fluidics are also yeah, brought into the system as well. So if you, for example, want to sort infectious material or maybe you want to go for clinical applications and you want to sort uh, patient samples after another, you need very strong decontamination or cleaning processes of the fluidics. And uh, you have a high chance that there still is sample to sample carryover, either on the infectious agents itself, but also maybe, for example, endotoxins, which might accumulate inside the tubings. As I said, also safety concerns um, are actually under discussions as we generate um, actively droplets. And if you generate these droplets, uh, including yeah, infectious material, such as bacteria, or maybe also non-tested patient samples, this is of course a problem for the operator. In addition, these systems, uh, of course, they are very advanced, but you also need highly trained um, yeah, professionals to really work with them. And um, these people really need to know what they're doing as a lot of things need to be adjusted, such as drop delay or laser alignment. So you see, there's uh, some problems with droplet sorters, which we think we can overcome with the technology we developed here at Milton e Biotech with a cartridge-based uh, max point tidal cell sorter. Here you can see a first uh, hint on how this whole sorting principle might uh, um, look like. This is a whole closed cartridge system, actually, the cells won't leave uh, out to the open. It's a single use, so you also do not have the problems of carryover and so on. And the sorting principle works via a micro valve, so also completely different from the droplet sorters. Um, so you can see it's a complete different sorting technology. But I will explain that in a minute. First, I would yeah, just like to show you the instrument we are talking about. And this is actually the Max Pontido cell sorter, uh, which we are yeah, discussing today. And we think uh, with this cell sorter, you can really gain for high cell viabilities and functionalities as the sorting process itself is very gentle. Um, it takes place in a closed and sterile cartridge system, which also uh, yeah, makes it easy to transfer protocols uh, to clinical or translational settings. Um, as we're not producing droplets and we are in a closed system, we have a safe sorting environment. And last but not least, it's an easy to use system. Um, once you build up your um, gating strategy, it's simply a plug and play of the cartridge and um, you will get your cells afterwards. But I will discuss all these points on the coming slides in more detail. First of all, um, the device itself, it uh, has quite small dimensions, as you can see here, uh, which is also not that common for um, cell sorters. So it's a benchtop instrument with a very small footprint. Um, you find a big external screen uh, on the top of it, which makes it easy to yeah, set up your gating strategy and uh, yeah, to check all your uh, settings. Uh, we also have an integrated uh, touchscreen monitor here uh, for operation as well. Uh, the whole sorter is covered by a sheet metal housing, and you find this sliding door here for insertion of the cartridge into the instrument and into the cooling chamber here, which can be cooled down to four degrees of Celsius. Concerning the optics, 
Um, the title comes with three different lasers, a 405 nanometers laser, 488 and 638 nanometers laser. Um, and uh, we can yeah, monitor eight color channels in total that combined with two scatter channels, a backscatter and a side scatter uh, sums up to 10 parameters we can use for cell sorting using the Max Point Taito. So we have a very broad um, yeah, experimental flexibility on how we want to go for our gating strategies and which antibodies we want to use for a sorting process. Of course, we have much more um, details on uh, specifications for the instrument on our web page. You can find them there as well as uh, in uh, the brochure of the MaxQuant title, which you also can find here on our website or following this link here uh, if you are interested in more details concerning this. Now, I would like to come to the actual heart of the Max Quant Taito, and that is the Max Quant Taito cartridge. You can see a picture here, one from the side and one from the bottom. And maybe we start with that picture here. You can also already see we have three different chambers in this cartridge. An input chamber where you put your um, yeah, cell suspension of interest, where you want to sort your cells out. Then we have a positive collection chamber and a negative collection chamber. We have volumes of 10 ml, 2 ml, and 10 ml. We have a mixing propeller here, which is magnetically driven in the input chamber, uh, preventing the cells from settling down. Um, and yeah, at the bottom here, we find the microchip where the cells are then running through from the input chamber, and then the sort decision is made whether they go into the positive or the negative collection chamber. If we look at the bottom here, it's really only that small part here, which you can see, which is um, this microchip, and we can see it magnified here. Um, you can see the cells come in through here, go through a channel, sort decision is made, and the valve either redirects the cells or net or not. The whole thing runs, of course, with pressure coming from the instrument and going here at the bottom through this air inland port into the cartridge. Um, just to uh, make you more aware on how small this microchip is, here you can see on this picture that uh, we have really very small dimensions uh, using this microchip. And the heart of this microchip, uh, in addition, is the microvalve which makes the sort decision. So you can see normally the cells run from the left here straight ahead into the negative collection chamber. But if a positive event is recognized, the valve opens and redirects the cell simply into the positive collection chamber. And just to make you aware on how fast this thing works, here we needed to perform a strobe capture uh, to visualize the movement of the valve and one of those cycles is around 30 microseconds. The sorting principle in general is explained in this movie here. So as I said, at the bottom of the cartridge, air comes from the instrument through an 0.1 micrometer filter, then goes through this tubing here, again through an 0.1 micro, micrometer filter into the input chamber. A mild air pressure builds up, which is only three PSI, so 20 times less than in droplet sorters, and presses the cell suspension through the microchip into the positive and collection, uh, negative collection chambers. And you can see what happens on the microchip. The cells come here, are interrogated by the three lasers, and if a positive sort event is recognized, a magnetic pulse opens the microvalve, which very gently simply redirects the cell into the positive collection chamber, and all the rest runs straight ahead into the negative collection chamber. This here is a high-speed video of uh, CFSE labeled K562 cells, um, which are sorted from unlabeled background. Excuse the bad quality of this video, but I think it really nicely shows that only the fluorescent cells are grabbed by the microvalve. The other cells, which are not fluorescent, run through straight ahead into the negative collection chamber. 
you can still see the cells running through. I hope um, the contrast is good enough uh, for you also to observe that. I think here is another fluorescent cell in here. And yeah, that is how the redirection of those cells works. And interestingly, the whole quite long video was only 1.2 milliseconds long, which is really, really, really um, very fast and uh, actually even faster than a single beat of a hummingbird's wing. So another video um, showing um, like the gentle sorting principle in the cartridge uh, is shown here. Cells are sorted and run through uh, the microval uh, microchip into the positive collection chamber and then they're entering here and you can see um, they're simply flowing into the positive collection chamber. A very gentle process. They're not like coming very fast, hitting a surface or something like that. And you can also see in real time, it's a lot of cells which can be sorted via this microvolt technology here. <clears throat> yes, another aspect I would like to talk about is uh, safety during cell sortings. And this uh, is, of course, an issue for several applications, um, especially when you are going to sort patient material, which might not be tested already, or even where you know it is infectious, or other infectious materials such as bacteria, uh, yeast, parasites, uh, stuff like that. And um, yeah, it has a long history of concerts, um, especially when working with those kind of materials. And um, in conventional droplet sorters, as I said before, they are open systems. This safety can only be achieved when biosafety cabinets are used. These are probably, in the most cases, quite, quite large. They need a lot of space. They are quite expensive. And um, with uh, the microvalve mediated sorting technology and the Max One title, we are not producing any aerosols or droplets actively. And even if we would do it, we would still be inside a closed system. So it wouldn't even be a problem. And this means that we uh, have really a safe sorting environment for the operators as well using this system here. <clears throat> the whole sorting procedure, as uh, the title of today's webinar also says, plug and play cell sorting is indeed really simple. Of course, um, the process is based on um, yeah, fluorescence-based multi-parametric cell sorting. And uh, yeah, coming with that, you need to think about the antibody panel you want to use, about your gating strategy. So of course, you need to know what you're doing and how you want to isolate your cells. You need to set up this gating strategy, of course. But once you created your workspaces, the general workflow at the Max Point title is really easy and straightforward. So actually, you simply have to load your sample of interest into the cartridge, um, going through a pre-filter system. And then once you have your sample inside the cartridge, you can scan it with this barcode scanner here. Our cartridges have um, yeah, barcodes at the site, uh, which, uh, yeah, have all the information about uh, the cartridge, the microchip type, and so on. So all the settings are uh, brought into right configuration after the scanning process. Then you simply load the cartridge into the instrument, into the cooling chamber here. Um, you press the start button, and you have an operator-free sorting process. So you do not need to sit in front of the device and check, for example, the drop delay if everything works out nicely, you can simply walk away, come back uh, after your cells are sorted, and then in the end collect your sorted cells of interest. And if you now sum up uh, all uh, the hands-on time, the real hands-on time you have uh, at the Max One title, and compare it to droplet sorters, uh, you find that you really have nine times less hands-on time uh, on the Max One title compared to conventional droplet sorters, which are only 26 minutes. And here you can see how we calculated um, this uh, workflows actually in general. So uh, of course, in the droplet sorters, 
you have things like uh, that you need to start a device and you have first what you have to do is a fluidic startup and stabilization for example um, you uh, have to set uh, the sheet pressure and so on so you have lots of different things to adjust but uh, using the title you can simply as I said load your cartridge into the instrument and um, yeah press the sort button and walk away come back afterwards this is why we have in general a much lower hands-on time compared to the droplet sorters found here so to sum um, the features of the max point title up using this slide here um, as I said the sorting procedure in general is very very different to the one we know from conventional droplet sorters so we work at very low pressure at only around 3 psi we do not have any strong decompression steps um, we even can take the cells out of the cartridge put it into another cartridge and sort the cells again I will also show some data uh, concerning this so uh, this also shows that we have a quite gentle sorting process and in addition you won't lose any cells inside the tubing set so the cells still um, remain in the cartridge and you can retrieve them from the input the positive or the negative collection chamber so a very gentle sorting mechanism second uh, we have a sterile sorting environment the cartridges provide a closed system which is really important if you also consider going for translational or clinical applications we do not have any carryover from sample to sample as there are no tubings inside the system uh, we use single-use disposable cartridges and there's no sheath fluids needed uh, coming into the cartridge so you see there's no chance for carryover and also as I said no tubings um, no fluidings in general so no contamination of these either with yeah, directly infectious material or endotoxins or whatever with a safe sorting environment as we're not producing aerosols or droplets and uh, therefore we also do not need a biosafety cabinet uh, a small biosafety cabinet is already the cartridge as it is a closed system and it's an easy to use device we have a benchtop sized instrument so you do not need too much space for it um, the plug and play cartridge system is really easy to use and also for operators which are not very experienced once the workspaces are set up they can operate the systems more or less all by themselves um, you don't need to check for uh, drop delay or laser alignment and you also do not have any um, extensive cleaning routines in between sorts so you see um, we have quite some features in the title uh, which make uh, the system quite unique <clears throat> and with that um, I uh, finished my first part of uh, this webinar uh, where I wanted to introduce into the uh, yeah, sorting technology uh, on the microchip and micro valve based uh, Max Pontido cell sorter and now I would like to give you a few uh, application examples with some data uh, we generated using this device and uh, of course we have also more uh, applications tested you can find different examples of those applications as well as also scientific posters application notes on our website and you can download them there as well so first application I would like uh, to talk about and I mentioned that before as well is a sequential sorting of um, in this case leukocyte subpopulations as I said we have a quite gentle sorting technology and this enables us to run cells several times through the instrument without affecting um, viability or functionality of the cells in this case we started with peripheral blood mononuclear cells and in a first sorting step we sorted for CD19 positive B cells then in a Negative sorting step where we took the negative sorted fraction out, put it into another cartridge. We sorted CD8 positive T cells. And then we even did a third sorting step 
uh, again took the negative sorted fraction, put it in a third cartridge and sorted NK cells. And to check whether this affects the cells or not, we assessed viability after each sort. And you can see here uh, the outcome of this experiment. So um, here you can, in this row, you can see always the input and in this uh, row, um, the sorted technologies. Um, so for the CT19 positive B cells, you can see we started with 4.13% uh, and ended up with a purity of 94.7% and a viability of 98.9%. So you can see uh, a first sorting step did not affect viability of the cells. The second sorting step with the CD8 positive T cells, we enriched them from 21% to 96%, as you can see here, and still those cells were highly viable with 99.4%. And in the third sorting step, uh, we enriched the um, NK cells, as you can see here, coming already from uh, quite a high uh, um, um, purity, uh, ended up with 99% purity, and still the viability was really outstanding with 99.6%. These cells run through the cartridge three times in a row. You can see they were not affected uh, in the viability. So this makes it possible to run your sample through the cartridge several times. And you don't need to do that only for different populations. You can also do um, it for the same uh, cell population if you want to go for different sorting steps to enhance purity over time, for example. Second application I would like to talk about is um, sorting of risk material in general, um, such as bacteria or yeast, for example. And um, this, uh, the sorting of these materials is often not even allowed in many flow core facilities or at many instruments in uh, research groups, as uh, there is a risk of cross-contamination or carryover um, of the systems or even that endotoxins will stay in the tubings inside the instruments. So if it's allowed, it's a very time-consuming process to clean um, between uh, this sort and the next sort, because the next user, of course, does not want to have bacteria in his uh, mammalian cell culture sample. So uh, what we did in these cases here, we sorted directly the bacteria or also the yeast, here in this case, uh, GFP-positive E. coli bacteria, you can see uh, started with a purity of 36% and ended up with 97%. Um, you can see it here in the plots as well. And uh, also here, um, the semi-positive um, uh, yeast, we enriched them from purity 20.5% 20, 20 to 95.3%. Uh, you can see here the outcome as well. So uh, we are actually able to sort those quite small cells, such as bacteria and yeast. But um, important, we also think, uh, yeah, we, uh, we don't have any carryover in the instrument between samples. And of course, we tested this with, with several different um, tests. Uh, I would like to show you one of them, for example, here for the yeast. So um, the test was the following. First, we sorted. Um, a yeast suspension in the Taito, um, sorted that for 90 minutes. Then after the sort was finished, we took out this cartridge, put directly in another one, only containing running buffer, that's it. And then we simply run the running buffer for 90 minutes. And then we took out uh, this cartridge here and checked the running buffer for its bio burden. And as you can see, we're not able to find any colony forming units after the sort. So you can see there was no uh, carryover from this sample to this sample here. And of course, this makes it possible to also um, yeah, sort this kind of material um, yeah, in uh, your system without uh, yeah, going uh, for the chance to uh, infect the next one as well. Another um, point uh, of this um, application is that also uh, quite simple GFP positive cell sorts, for example, if you're if you in a core facility and you need your trained personal 
sitting in front uh, of a quite a complex droplet sorter just to sort out, um, for example, GFP positive cells for a customer. Of course, that's quite expensive. And uh, another possibility is that with an easy plug and play system here in the Max Point Taito, you can sh simply shift the GFP positive cell sorts uh, also to this instrument as there's no operator needed uh, sitting in front of the instrument and uh, observing what, what happens. So, as I said, no sample to sample carryover using this system here. Another example uh, I would like to discuss is um, the sorting of uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. Um, these are very sensitive cells requiring careful handling um, for the uh, preservation of good replating efficiencies, which are, of course, important as you um, want to uh, induce and uh, differentiate your cells after, maybe after the sorting process. And so you also need an absolutely sterile environment as you have uh, quite long cell culture procedures after the sorting step. In this case here, again, as I said, GFP positive cells uh, are nicely to sort at the max point title. Um, we purify GFP positive iPSCs, um, in this case with a one uh, step sort strategy, ended up with 97% in purity coming from 20. Here you can see the sort gate. Uh, the viability was just fine with 98%. Um, after the sorting process, but of course the viability is not all we wanted to test in this case, but we also really wanted to test the downstream functionality of these cells. And uh, this was done by replating um, the cells and checking for the survival rates um, which were uh, yeah, observed during these replating efficiency. And uh, what you can see here is that the positive fraction uh, here was uh, compared with a control which was simply stored at four degrees of Celsius as also the sorting process happened at this temperature. And uh, you can see um, after this 1.5 to two hour processing time, we had comparable replating efficiencies showing that uh, the sorting in the Max one title did not negatively affect um, the replating uh, and survival and functionality of uh, IPSCs. Again, showing that the sorting mechanism in general is really gentle uh, when you go by a microvalve. Another application I would like to discuss is the sorting of neutrophils. Um, neutrophils, as uh, all of you know, which are working with them, are extremely sensitive to mechanical stress. So even uh, if you pipe at them too strongly or use the wrong material, they might be activated already. And that is, of course, sometimes quite difficult, especially if you want to sort these cells uh, to high purities. And um, we were interested in whether this is also true for the microvalve-mediated cell sorting on the Max Quant Taito. So you can see um, the sorting strategy, which was used uh, to, uh, to isolate um, the CD16 positive neutrophils here. You can see here the input, and in the end, after the sort of sorted fraction, again, we have a nice purity of 98% and also a nice viability. But of course, we were interested in whether these cells were activated during the sorting process or whether we could still activate them after the sorting process as well. So we checked for morphology. As you can see here, we uh, yeah, um, compared with different isolation techniques, techniques such as also the Max Express. Um, uh, or pair call, and you can see uh, that uh, the title uh, did not affect the morphology of the cells in any negative way. We also tested uh, the activation of the cells. Uh, as you can see, um, the cells were not activated when we checked for the um, surface uh, marker CD11B, which becomes upregulated during activation of neutrophils or uh, CD62L, which becomes downregulated during the activation process. And uh, this already shows um, that uh, the process in general is um, yeah, really gentle, but we were still able uh, to stimulate the cells after the sorting process. We also tested phagocytosis in this case, and you can see um, this still worked nicely on tidal sorted cells um, uh, as these pictures here show. 
and also the migration on a two-dimensional surface uh, towards an FMLP gradient, which comes from down here, uh, still work nicely in uh, tidal sorted cells, as you can see here. It was comparable to the one in the control. So we still have functional non-activated cells uh, in terms of neutrophil sorting uh, on uh, the max one title. The last application I would like to talk about uh, is a protocol um, about clinical sorting of antigen-specific T cells. This protocol is indeed uh, currently uh, part of a clinical trial in phase two in the US. Uh, our collaborators use um, um, a cell product from the patient. Uh, here, a look of reasons or PBMC product. Um, then uh, they use another device from Milton Biotech the Clinimax Prodigy, which uh, also works via a magnetic depletion of the cells. And um, you can also afterwards use um, this system uh, to culture cells and um, to generate cells of your interest. In this case, it was simply used to deplete CD25 positive T cells uh, with a Prodigy. These cells then were uh, taken into culture and co-cultured with uh, monocyte-derived dendritic cells, which were loaded with an antigen of interest. Um, as I said, uh, they were co-cultured with the T cells, which were isolated, um, and an additional activation via cytokines, cytokines took place. Uh, and then we ended up with antigen-specific T cells um, in yeah, around uh, this um, percentage here, around three percentage. And then these cells actually were sorted with a MaxQuant Taito uh, using fluor fluorochrome uh, coupled um, dextromeres. And um, in this case here, we ended up with um, a very high, uh, highly pure uh, cell population of 99.4%, as you can see here. And um, yeah, these cells then were cultured again uh, to expand them. Uh, to have enough cells to inject them into the patient again. And um, this is an overview of different uh, sorts which were used uh, for this protocol. You can see here the um, starting uh, frequency. You can see the uh, purity uh, after sorting and also the yield after sorting. And uh, you can see that we were really able to enrich the antigen-specific T cells very nicely using this protocol and all that uh, without the need for antibiotics as we are a closed system uh, and did not need to add antibiotics after the sorting process. Now, as I said, uh, this protocol is already implemented in a clinical trial and there you can already see, um, okay, TITO seems to be uh, used in clinical trials, in clinical settings or translational work. Um, I would at the end of this uh, webinar, uh, like to shortly uh, go into that direction as well and to explain the benefits uh, using this system in, in these settings here. And I can say that several of our customers are actually already in the clinical trials and treating patients. Uh, even more are currently risk assessing or uh, in their preclinical work. And um, the interesting fact is that um, all this was uh, um, done with a research use only title instrument with research use only and home crew running buffer uh, and with research use only cartridges. So the benefits were still so big that um, our customers um, yeah, took these research use only uh, consumables and risk assessed them and um, yeah, build a workflow um, including title for their clinical trials. And um, I think this uh, already shows that the TIDO is a state-of-the-art sorter in multi-parametric clinical cell sorting protocols. Now, um, the main clinical applications we uh, see for this kind of um, cell sorting so far is um, uh, one of the examples I already showed, uh, especially for antigen-specific T cells, but we also see a strong demand uh, to sort T-Rex um, using multi-parametric uh, um, fluorescence-based cell sorting. 
CAR T cells are also very, very strongly in the focus, as well as uh, iPSCs or all kinds of iPSC derived cells uh, or MSCs as well. And as I said before, um, the antigen specific T cells are already uh, yeah, quite heavily uh, used and sorted on TITO. Here, for example, using um, uh, antigen specific T cell protocols, we have currently uh, seven different clinical trials ongoing with um, yeah, the max quantido included in the workflow, which are either in phase one or phase two. So you can see there's already a strong use of the instrument um, for clinical and translational work. And this is, of course, due to the fact that we have a real closed system here, um, which is an important factor for um, the cell sorting in clinical environments. This was already recognized also by a, a Canadian reporter team. I thought this uh, slide is quite funny here as they called the Max Quant title the cancer fighting machine, uh, as they also recognized its potential. And um, yeah, that this device can really be nicely used to sort antigen specific T cells in order to treat cancer. Now, as I said, uh, all these protocols and applications were performed with um, research use only um, consumables so far. Uh, uh, but um, I'm really proud to announce that uh, we will in a few weeks be able to, um, yeah, to provide all the consumables which are in direct contact with the cells in a max GMP format and therefore will enable GMP compliant multi-parameter sorting on the max quantitative cell sort. And uh, this portfolio includes, first of all, the max GMP title running buffer, uh, which is already available. Then we will have in a few weeks, the max GMP title cartridge, um, which uh, yeah, is our plastic consumable here, um, already uh, in the works and uh, we will launch it very, very soon. And um, we will also, we are able to provide max GMP fluorescent antibodies for um, cell labeling. And um, that means all that touches the cells, as the cells do not leave the cartridge or go into any tubing uh, in the instrument or any sheath is also coming into the system. That means really all that touches the cells uh, during the sorting process is available in max GMP format. And um, here you can see an overview of all the antibodies we provide for several applications in uh, different, uh, coupled with different fluorochromes. Uh, so you really can build up a nice panel depending on your application, of course. And um, what is uh, the really strong benefit of our Max GMP products, of our Max GMP title consumables, is that we provide a long with uh, this an extensive documentation uh, which um, really makes it much more easy uh, to receive trial approval from regulatory support and saves a lot of money and work for the customers. And this includes a um, batch specific certificate of analysis, um, a certificate of origin uh, or a TSE BSE statement including also animal component free statements and the so-called product information file we are also offering for our Max GMP products. And that includes quite a lot of information. For example, the description of the products, um, for example, regulatory information, raw materials used, then specifications like in process control or QC release testings, uh, safety information such as sterility, biocompatibility, particles, endotoxins, leachables, extractables. So you really get a lot of information uh, when you buy these Max GMP products. And this makes it much more easy to implement your cell sorting protocol you developed into the clinics. And actually the cartridge we developed is um, in the working principle, the same as um, a research use only cartridge so you can 
easily transfer your protocol into a GMP compliant format. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Um, I hope I could uh, convince you and um, yeah, get your enthusiasm that microvalve mediated cell sorting using the Maxfront Taito is indeed a very interesting option and an alternative to already existing technologies. And if you have any questions concerning this, I'm happy to uh, take those questions. And with that, I would like to hand over to Jeff again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Epler. That was fantastic. Uh, great information. And uh, yes, there are some questions rolling in already, so uh, we can get to some of those. Uh, have quite a few, actually. Uh, if, if people out there listening have additional questions, please type them in now, and we can get to as many of them as possible before we end the event today. Um, <laughs> I love the slide on the cancer fighting machine. That was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really fun. It's a whole video. I also implemented the link, so if you're really interested, you can also watch uh, this, um, yeah, this video on the website of um, this television program. That's great. Uh, okay, we have a few people actually asking the same question about backscatter. Why is the Taito using a backscatter and not a forward scatter? Um, this, this is a popular one. Yeah, that's an interesting question, and. Um, of course, the forward scatter is uh, the yeah, uh, normal thing to find if you work with scatters and flow cytometry, everyone's working with a flow forward and a, a side scatter. But in this case, uh, if, you, if you have a look, I still have the picture here, if you have a look on the cartridge and we have the microchip on the base of this cartridge, um, the problem is that uh, with a forward scatter, the cartridge is in the way. So we cannot use um, the forward scatter as a signal as there's simply the cartridge. And um, so uh, we developed this backscatter, uh, collect the backscatter signal, and it indeed looks a little bit different to the forward scatter. So you have to rethink a little bit, but it still works. And um, so you still can work with uh, two different scatter signals uh, using the MaxFont title. Okay, great. We have a few questions about um, amounts and volumes, like uh, what's the maximum amount of cells uh, that you can cool. sort in one cartridge is a question. Mm -hmm. So, um, as I said, we had an input volume of 10 milliliters going into the input chamber, and uh, we stayed a maximum cell concentration of 50 million cells per milliliter which then sums up with a 10 ml to 500 million cells um, for one cartridge. It, of course, strongly depends on the application and of the percentage of your cells you're interested in. Um, uh, if you can go really that high or if uh, you should go that high. Uh, but yeah, that's, um, that's actually what uh, is the maximum amount you can put into a cartridge. That's 500 million cells. <clears throat> Okay, and a related question is how fast can you can you sort them? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, also interesting question. So um, we uh, run this uh, current cartridge de design with uh, four milliliters per hour. So if you actually uh, fill up the, um, the uh, input chamber completely with a 10 ml, a full sort would take using this cartridge around, um, yeah, two and a half hours. And uh, we state that we actually really have the fastest microvalve which is present. It can move up to 30,000 times per second. Um, you wouldn't use uh, that as a sorting speed, um, but we can go uh, with the current cartridge design uh, to around 3,000 sorting events per second, but we uh, will uh, also, um, launch another cartridge um, system we are currently developing and which is more or less uh, um, yeah, ready and it will come later this year where we can go double as fast. So we can go even with a, a eight milliliters per hour. So a whole uh, 10 ml um, when you fill up the whole uh, input, uh, it will only take the whole sort will only take one hour and yeah, uh, in 25 minutes and um, yeah 
And with that, we can also go uh, for higher cell uh, sorting rates with up to 6,000 per uh, second. And that's, of course, only the target cells we're sorting actively out. Uh, we can analyze, analyze actually up to uh, 55,000 cells per second. Great. I think that covers it. I have, um, I think you may have answered this one during the presentation, but it's probably worth hitting again. Uh, if I have a question about rare cell applications, can you talk about rare cell applications and answer if you can sort rare cells to high purity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also interesting. So um, yes, uh, of course you can do that. Um, and depending on your protocol, you uh, might be interested in um, yeah, doing a sequential uh, sorting strategy so that uh, in the first sort you do a sort of debulking sorting step um, and then take what you got in the first sort go into a second cartridge and then go for higher purity and that is uh, indeed possible as I said as we have quite gentle um, conditions in uh, the title so passing the cells through the cartridge uh, a few times in a row isn't the problem at all so uh, you can go for uh, these type of uh, sorting steps, of course. But um, I think I also uh, showed the um, application example where uh, we uh, had this um, yeah, ap application uh, where first the cells uh, were uh, depleted in um, the Clinimax Prodigy, another device of Multini Biotech, and then were transferred uh, into the um, Max one title for the multi-parameter sorting. Um, we can also, uh, yeah, for example, uh, recommend protocols like that. For example, T-Rec protocols we develop where you first, um, yeah, enrich your cells um, using the Clinimax and then transfer your cells in into the uh, Max one title. You both of the systems are closed systems, um, and there you still, um, yeah, keep your um, your cells under, in a sterile environment when working with uh, these two devices. So you have uh, different options depending on your application, of course. Okay. Um, uh, we have, uh, let's see, let's do one more question here uh, asking about the different cartridge designs. Are, are there, is there just this one cartridge for all applications or are there or will there be uh, different cartridge designs for different applications coming? Yeah, also interesting question. So, um, yeah, as I stated before in, in my talk, um, we uh, will launch a GMP cartridge very, very soon. This, of course, is uh, comparable to the standard cartridge in its uh, actual design so that you can transfer your protocols one to one from research use to clinical or translational applications. Um, I also mentioned that another uh, cartridge will come later this year. Uh, uh, the so-called high-speed cartridge uh, where we can run double as fast as we can do it now and uh, we actually um, also performed some experiments uh, where we uh, yeah made a heads up with um, with conventional droplet sorters and we could even outperform uh, those with a T-Rec application which was really really nice so we can go really really fast with uh, this cartridge type which will come later this year and um, of course we're also thinking of other uh, cartridge designs which uh, we are currently looking in and developing so yeah there uh, might come uh, different uh, of those cartridges in the future okay great i think that's probably a good place to leave it i uh, i should say thank you very much dr epler for the information it was a fantastic presentation very nice job uh, thank you to everyone who joined us today. Uh, each attendee will receive a link to a recording of this webinar in the upcoming days. Um, if there were some questions that we did not get to today, those questions will be answered via email. And if you have additional questions, um, either about the Max Quant Taito cell sorter uh, or about florafinder.com, uh, you can email those questions to us at support at florafinder.com. And uh, that is it. I, I appreciate everyone attending and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.